Well, hello everyone, let's go ahead and get started. My name is Craig Schellerhammer, and welcome to my presentation, which is about serialization control. Now, serialization control is clearly, for me, one of the most exciting topics in all of Oracle. And I think I could keep talking about this, you know, and just, and just never get tired. So let's get started. Serialization control. I want to start with this. Oracle is very good at creating this illusion of simultaneous access to Oracle memory structures. Not just looking at them, but actually changing and updating and deleting and allocating these, these chunks of memory and connecting them together. It's an illusion because, you know, we all know kind of deep down that one process can change one little piece of memory at a time. But when the illusion of the simultaneous access is working well, we believe it, like we want to believe it. But when performance starts to get really bad, we start seeing a lot of CPU consumption, we start seeing a lot of, of uh, you know, mutex or latch types weight events, that's when we start to realize that, hey, this is an illusion and the illusion is starting to kind of fall apart. And that's when we get involved because our job is to make sure that this illusion is maintained. And so nobody even thinks about simultaneous changes to the underlying memory structure. So never forget this is an illusion. So what's the point of all this? Well, it's like this. Little memory structures big memory structures. See, the, the problem is, is that when we learn about Oracle, we learn about memory structures in a nice linear, real simple link list type of way. But that's not the way it is. It's, it's grander than this. It's, it's more wonderful than this. It's three-dimensional and it's, it's dynamic. And I wanted to show you these visualizations, and I'm going to show you some more of these, because I think it helps us understand the complexity of the illusion, right? and just how amazing it actually is that this stuff works. It just blows my mind. About myself, um, I'm a long-term, long-time Oracle DBA, and I specialize in Oracle performance analysis. I started working with Oracle in 1989, and I was a Forms 2.3 developer, and I quickly transitioned into specializing in performance, specifically Oracle. And then later on, I also merged into that capacity planning and predictive analysis. And this has led me and enabled me to author a couple of books, Oracle Performance Firefighting and Forecasting Oracle Performance. And at some point, we have to serialize. Oracle has to have complete control over these little chunks of memory. Right? The problem with that, though, is all the effort of parallelization from users, from the database, from the operating system. I mean, just think about Oracle. It's got multiple background processes running in parallel. We have a bunch of server processes running in parallel. There's a bunch of processes on the operating system running in parallel, right? But when it comes down to serialization control at the memory structure level, right, this is when all that effort kind of just gets compressed down into a serial stream. And if there's a problem with that, the illusion breaks down and performance gets horrible. And all that effort to parallelize just gets flushed down the toilet. And that's why when there is latching and mutex issues, Performance is just so bad because the serialization is slowing us down. So never forget, serialization is death, and parallelization is life. All right, this is a key slide, and I've generalized this now over the years because Oracle continues to change the algorithm in, in just little details, in, in little ways. But it really is basically two main components. The first one is 
attempting to get the latch, a single request, give me the latch. And then if you don't get the latch, you try again. And that's called spinning. It's repeated attempts to try and get the latch. At a certain point, coded into Oracle says, you know what, this is, this is not working. We need to back off. Okay, so there's a spinning and there's the back off. This, it's like this in both latches and mutexes, but it's implemented in different ways. And so we've got to remember, there's a lot of processes involved in this algorithm, in the, the gimme, 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 in, in the potential of the back off. Okay? And so I want you to kind of just picture this in your minds right now. Let's say we have a room full, let's say all of you are trying to acquire the latch. Okay? There's one latch. Okay? I happen to have a latch right here in front. Here's the latch. See my latch? Okay. This is the latch. All of you want this right now. So you're going to start saying, give me the latch, give me the latch. And it, it's kind of like, you know, this is the latch. And, it's, and, and you don't know when it's going to be available. You just know that at some point it will be available. And you're hoping that just as it's available, you're going to say, give me the latch, like slow motion, right? The latch appears. All of a sudden, there it is. Whoa, slow motion. Got it. Got the latch. And somebody else is trying to get in there like, oh, shoot, I missed it. And, you know, somebody else is like, oh, shoot, I missed the latch. And you're like, woohoo, I got the latch. Now you have the control structure. You can access the memory structure. But the beauty of this, then, is while you're actually holding the latch, okay, and you're accessing the memory structures, other processes are going through the, give me the latch, give me the latch. I said, well, I thought it was like more complicated. He's like, no, it's actually pretty straightforward. So keep that in mind, right? There's some complexity involved in this, but fundamentally, it's actually pretty straightforward. Okay, let's, let's now look at time. How does all the like Oracle time and our time-based analysis fit into this? Well, remember Oracle processes are either consuming CPU or they're waiting to consume CPU. An AWR or a stats pack report, very clear here. We have our CPU consumption right there, and part of that could be the spinning, trying to acquire the latch. And if we had a wait event that was related to latches or mutexes, that would be the sleep time, the back off time that we actually see. Okay? How do we use this to actually solve real problems? All right. Well, the, here are some steps that I actually go through, and this is, you'll see where this presentation fits into all of that. First of all, I wanted to talk about some of the specifics to latching, because it's different than new Texas when you get down to the details, so I want to make sure that we're comfortable with that. So let's go into this. And while this slide right here looks, uh, there's not much in it, well, there's a reason for that, because when we talk about mutexes, it's going to be a lot more clear about how mutexes are used, the difference between latches and mutexes, and some of the advantages of mutexes uh, as well. Notice that there are multiple control structures, and there is no parent-child relationship. There's not, there's not an issue here, because what Oracle has done is each one of the latches, each one of those latches now, is related to multiple chains. So the Oracle kernel code actually has this select call in there. And it essentially backs off, that's the sleep. And then when it reaches that time, the 10 milliseconds, it times out and processing continues on. So this is a situation where like catching Oracle in the act here, when it was spinning trying to get a latch and it couldn't get it, so it backed off. And how did it back off? By using the select call for 10 milliseconds. Spin count has been the bane of DBAs forever. Okay? The problem with the spin count underscore parameter is that it affects all of the latches. It is not, la it is not latch specific. Latch classes rock, man. They are cool. The magic here is that P2 is the latch number. So even though the weight event is not real valuable to me, it is, but not, doesn't give me the detail I need. The detail is in P2. And that's the latch number. 
And does that 150 look familiar? Well, that's the cash buffer chain latch. We're going to talk about mutexes specifically. And because this is a recorded uh, presentation here, I can take a little more time than I usually get to uh, when it's a live group, actually. So mutex, okay, what is a mutex? In fact, if you got a little Linux box, just do like a man-k mutex and boom, you're going to come up with like around, what, 15 to 20 C functions that are related to mutexes. So this is one of the first really important things to understand. That's differences between latches and mutex. The huge benefit, and this is the one that I really want to impress upon you, and why I think Oracle started using mutexes in the library cache is because of what's called false contention. Now remember, I mentioned this early, earlier. When the developer creates the memory structure, they have the option of including the mutex, right, the control structure, as part of the underlying memory structure. When I talked about using latches to manage library cache access, now we're going to look at mutexes. And you can see there's a lot more in this picture because in every single one of the chunks of memory, whether it's the bucket, whether it's the... All right, now it's time to shift our focus and I'm going to look specifically at the algorithm that Oracle uses to acquire a mutex. It's really cool and it's very similar to that with latching, except of course some of the functions are actually built into the C programming language so Oracle can more easily build off of that. Okay, so let's take a look at the graphic here. How about 12C? One of the first things I do whenever I get a new release of Oracle is I ask myself, hey, are there, are there new latches or new mutexes? The reason is, is because if there are new mutexes or new latches, that means there's new memory structures. So cool. Look at this slide. This is about the instance parameters we have available to us now in 12C and later versions of 11. Okay. Look at this. Man, what I want to focus the second thing is, is the weight scheme. This is, this is so awesome because now through multiple schemes which we can actually set, it's the system call that we talked about, right? When the, when the process tries to spin, can't get the mutex and it backs off by yielding the CPU. That's 11, 11.2 11 that was actually in. And let's look at another example, but this is an example in 12. What I did here, all right, so that's really what we talked about in this seminar. Now what you're going to need to do is you've got to understand Oracle internals, the memory architecture, and the process architecture. So if there are issues, you can take the Oracle internals and you can combine that with what I just told you. If you can do that, then you can ask yourself the questions about you know, why the new text is being requested so often. You, you'll know that if you know the architecture, right? And then you can ask the question, well, why is it being held so long? And you'll understand how that can take place. And then you can come up with solutions to alter the situation. Then you're going to... So this brings us to the end of this presentation. I hope you really enjoyed it, got a lot out of it. And if you have questions, again, feel free uh, to contact me. So thank you for listening and have a great rest of the conference. <laughs>